This is Mark again with MyWhistleAndFlute.com, and today I want to talk to you a little bit about getting the, getting that tone out of your transverse flute. Uh, I've put out some videos and various ones on fingering positions and, and how to hold your flute, and that uh, we'll talk a little bit about that, I guess, today as well. But the most important part of being able to play a transverse flute is being able to get a good quality sound, and that's the goal. That's the important part. Um, first of all, I recommend finding somewhere quiet where all the noise you're going to make isn't going to bother your loved ones too much. And uh, then uh, get ready. And when you get there, um, then we'll continue this video. So I'll wait for you to find someplace quiet. Okay, I'm done waiting. I hope you're someplace quiet or otherwise pause this and then press play when you're there. Uh, I'm not going to be held responsible for the noise that you're going to make uh, if your dog starts yelping. I'm going to use my forest flute. This is what I call our forest flute. We make this over at myfluteandwhistle.com, and it's made out of uh, uh, furniture grade green PVC. Very calm, very relaxing color. I love the color green. E flat's a wonderfully low key, a little bit easier uh, to to get the fingering stretch for medium hands than opposed to our uh, low D, which is which is a few inches larger. So, uh, but just a beautiful tone. And that with that nice vibrato, that's what we're going for when we play. How do we get there? When I first started playing transverse flute, all kinds of airy, I mean, it was just, it was horrible. And it, it sounded, you know, that's exactly what you're going to sound like when you first start playing. Not a big deal. You'll get over it. The first and most important part, in my opinion, is making sure that the that the uh, embouchure is directly in front of wherever the air is escaping your lips. Hopefully, right in the middle. As you as the air is coming out, it needs to be right in front. I watched one of uh, somebody that was trying to play one of my flutes uh, last week. I watched them pick it up and play, and they're blowing, but the hole is way over here. Okay, that's not going to work. So maybe stand in front of a mirror and make sure that the hole is lined up directly in front. I like to feel it with my lip. Just on the edge of, of the uh, embouchure on the lip side, I like to feel that it's there. After a while, you'll just pick up your flute and it'll just go right where it's supposed to go. Uh, muscle memory, after a certain number of times of practice, will begin to kick in. Next is to avoid puckering. If we pucker, we get dizzy. So we can get a tone. but you're gonna be releasing a lot more air than is necessary. And if you're playing a lot, especially at first, you're gonna get lightheaded and dizzy, like I'm a little bit right now. And that's not what we want. So it's not a pucker, it's it's a loose grin, okay? And that can be frustrating, since so it's a loose grin. What is a loose grin? I don't really know, it's just kind of, um, think about it like if you're trying to, if you're trying to take a, a, a piece of hair off of uh, the, the tip of your tongue, you don't do this usually. Oh, I guess you could, but you kind of purse your lips so that just the tip of your tongue is sticking out. That's what we're going for. That pursed lips, but but uh, so a loose a loose grin. Okay, isn't that lovely? I think that's lovely. Next is a relaxed lower lip. This is incredibly important, especially in the second octave. If that lower lip begins to tighten up as you get into the second octave, you're going to get. Uh, very much um, uh, reduction in tone. It's going to go sharp or it's going to go flat. And so keep that lower lip, keep your whole body relaxed and that will impact your lower lip. So let's try it. First, we're going to pick the flute up. And well, let's forget about fingerings for a minute. Just hold your flute and get it centered. Okay, you can see the hole. Get it centered in front of your lip and then purse your lips like you're going to try to take that uh, hair off of your tongue. And then we're going to go like T, T, T. Excuse me. I just uh, tasted my Coca-Cola all over again. Here we go. So in front of it. And you see how I'm rolling it back and forth? We're looking for that place where the, where the air is the clearest that we can get it. When you get the right tone, literally, there's almost not enough air coming out to blow out a candle. It doesn't take a lot of air to get a good quality sound. It's breath control and embouchure control. So pick up your flute, hold it in front of your lips, 
and go toot 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 toot. Okay. We're out of gas. Okay. Next. Put your fingering, get your fingers on, whether you have this size flute or another, it doesn't matter. Uh, uh, index middle ring, index middle ring, or if it's a larger stretch for your hands, maybe you're using the index middle uh, pinky. Um, I don't particularly care for that one, but if it's a really, really hard stretch for you, you might have to do that. But index middle ring, index middle ring. All closed, getting that low dough. Now, how do we keep it up here? We keep it up there by the, this knuckle, Oh, excuse me. This knuckle right here, between this knuckle and this knuckle of our left hand, is our hands going from a penny whistle grip. It transitions over so that the flute rests in between the, that knuckle, and then it presses against the this indentation between my lip and my chin. Eric. Uh, over at Eric the flute maker calls this a, a circle of pressure and it kind of is you can kind of see that circle it just kind of goes around right and it holds it in place so there's not much pressure being put uh, by my right hand just by my left okay go for that low dog again uh, relaxed grin relaxed lower lip pressure against uh, with your with your left now that's for the low dough. As we get into the upper octave, we really need to focus on keeping that embouchure nice and controlled, and if and if um, if anything, reducing the airstream, the width of the airstream even more. Now, when I first started playing transverse flute, and I could finally get the first octave. I couldn't get anything in the second octave. That's not a big deal. It's not a it's not a problem with your flute. It's a control issue with your embouchure and it's going to take some time. So start with the lower notes. Make sure you can pick your flute up consistently and get that note. Then start working your way up. If you get up to the second uh, finger and you begin to lose the tone, go back down again. you can get through that entire first octave you'll be able to play a few songs and um, and and start and then same thing just start working on that second octave and over time the embouchure muscles will get will get um, uh, more used to their position and you'll start getting those higher and higher notes but start with the first note then second note the building blocks but the most important thing is making sure that 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 hole is in the right place the the embouchure is in the right place in front of your lips and it's a nice controlled slit for the air not a pucker for the air we don't pucker sucker okay uh, we we blow with a nice um, even uh, relaxed grin like we're trying to get the uh, hair off the tip of our tongue all right I hope that helps let me know if you have any questions about that but enjoy playing your flute and I look forward to seeing you again here on YouTube sometime in the near future have a great day